Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What are we doing today? Well, I'm gonna be trying this again, but I'm gonna be talking about all the stuff that's gonna be coming up in July, because it is almost the end of June. By the time this video releases, it should be June 29th, and we're gonna be a week away from anniversary. So, I'm gonna very quickly go over the stuff that you can expect for it, not going into too much crazy detail, because I feel like some of the stuff warrants its own video to talk about but at least for you to know i feel would be good enough to know what's coming in the month all right so let's get right into it so to begin i will explain as always on the jp version of the game um it is two years ahead of us we're two years behind their anniversary happens at the end of july ours happens at the beginning of july the why is it like that the reason is is because of Anime Expo. It has always been like this, and it all makes it so that our anniversary is always coincide with the Saturday of Anime Expo. Anime Expo is next week. Um, so that's why it ends up being that way. And because it ends up being that way, the events that you're gonna see here are actually gonna appear in here, with the exception being Advanced Quest Part 7, which will be the first thing I will take a quick look at right here. And also, I believe, the limited missions, which should all happen the day before the anniversary or maybe the exact same time as the anniversary depending on how they want to do it um you never know with na sometimes so let's look first at these limited missions uh for these limited missions this is how you're going to get the anniversary ce's as long as as well as some other stuff um mission one clear any advanced quest one time and then clear an advanced quest from the first batch of advanced quest part seven and then the next mission that will be here the next day will clear any advanced quest one time, clear an advanced quest from the second batch of an advanced quest part 7. And then on the third day it will be summon using friend points uh, 30 times, acquire uh, 10 AXP from battle, raise one servant to level 30, and clear quest 5 times. If every single uh, servant in your um, that you own is at level 30, this automatically just completes. It, it's not asking you to quickly get one to level 30. It just checks to see if you have any at level 30. Um, and the rewards that you'll get from doing all these will be a 7th uh, anniversary CE exchange ticket, which is different from the Choose a 5 one. Uh, 70 mana prisms, 70 mana prisms, another one of the tickets, 70 mana prisms. Another golden tico, ticket, the Neko, uh, the Neko Mash event command code, and the Soya High School uniform. The Neko, this is what the Neko Mash event command code does and what it looks like. Gain one crit stars when attacking with the engraved card and then remove the latest poison, curse, or burn debuff from self when attacking with the engraved card. Now in terms of the high school uniform, this is what it is and these are the effects on it. 500% chance to increase one ally's buster performance for one turn, uh, recovers their HP. If you get it all the way to level 10, it's 50% buster and it heals for 2000 on the cooldown of 13. Its second skill is Observing the Boundary, 500% chance to reduce one enemy's instant kill resistance for one turn, gain crit stars. If you can get it to level 10, it's a minus 50% to death resistance and 15 crit stars on a cooldown of 10. And then finally, Sunset in the Classroom is the final skill, 500% chance to remove one ally's mental debuffs and then charge their MP gauge by 10%, level 10, cooldown 10, and this is how you look like with it on if you're a man, if you're picking the woman. Here she is, deviously looking at you. Uh, okay, I was going to say next, but that is not next. And then in terms of what are the uh, 7th Anniversary C exchange tickets, basically every year there is the ability to ch exchange for these CEs that don't serve a function other than having really good art, and you can pick two of them, and there's a buttload to choose from. It doesn't really matter which one you pick unless you're looking to collect all of them. If you're looking to collect all of them, First of all, good luck. You should probably pick the ones that it would, you would think would be the most unpopular to pick and pick those and then go searching on like a forum somewhere or I guess a, a Reddit or a Discord. Probably a Discord for more most modern kids. Uh, most modern people, I should say. I'm not sure how many people are doing it the way I did it back in the day <laughs> now that I think about it. But anyway, that's how these go. Pick whoever you want. Uh, just to let you know, there are going to be certain ones that are going to be locked behind having Lost Belt completion. Because this year, all the themes are based off of Lost Belts uh, 1 through 6 and Hein Kyo. Uh, so for Russia, the one that's locked behind this one is Kama and Taigong Wong, which is the ones that you can see right here. Uh, for 
uh, Scandinavia theme. It's Gutter de Mering and that needs Krimhild for China. Anastasia V. Dobranya Nikic and Bobo Sif. Those are locked behind it. For India, you need to complete uh, Lost Belt 4 to get Leonardo da Vinci Riders, a specific one, to exchange, I should say. Because again, just to emphasize, you can only get two, but it makes it sound like you can get more of them. No, this just unlocks the ability to choose them as someone you can pick. Clear Olympus, Arjuna Altar, and uh, Bargast. Clear High and Kyo. Um, it's easier to say who isn't locked behind us, but... <laughs> Uh, James Moriarty, Ruler, Char Charlotte Cordway, Marta Cardio, and Melusain are locked behind uh, Hein Kyo. And then Avalon Le Fay, Red Hair, and Percival are locked behind completion of Avalon Le Fay. So shout outs to that person who's a big Red Hair fan who is not going to be able to get it because they did not finish the story in time. And that's how they go. And like I said, pick the one with the arts that you like the most. I'm thinking probably for me it's going to be Bargast. And then someone else. Maybe Bunyan? My girl Quetz isn't up here, which makes her an auto pick for me. So I have to think about it. I did pick Bunyan as a previous one, so we'll ha I'll have to really look at all this art and really pick and choose from there. But anyway, that's that. That should appear just a little bit before the anniversary at some point. And Advanced Quest Part 7. These are the advanced quests that will be showing up. Advanced quests are quests to test your skills using your servant. Special quests, they appear permanently in the Caldea Gates. You can attempt an advanced quest anytime to fulfill the requirements to unlock them. And then rewards for clearing the advanced quests are special craft essences that boost the drop item rate. You already know this. It's already here. But just in case you didn't know, here you go. In terms of the batches that they're going to do, I believe it is going to be the... What is this called? Bloodstone Tears. Yeah, the Tears. I see they'll help with Tears. A CE that will help with the fluid. Oh, the, here you go. Here's all of them. Tears, shells, feather, fluid, book, uh, gear, and ash. So there you go. And these will unlock, I think, day by day. Or by some point of them. I assume they probably all drop at the same time. But it looks like you need to have cleared certain singularities or lost belts or um, Epic of Remnants, the EOS. So, we'll see. Uh, there you go. There we go. Okay. That's going to be Advanced Quest Part 7. I talked about this in the previous one, I think. So, I don't want to talk about it too much. <laughs> but it should be showing up real. It should actually, funny enough, still show up. No, actually, it should start up or up in early Ju July. Now that I think about it. Uh, now we go to July. Which is right here. And here we go. Anniversary. This is all the stuff in Anniversary. I've already done a lot of individual videos talking about some of them. Um, but I'll probably do something a little bit more going into details about what's going in. But I'll try and just bring up the important ones. So for the 7th Anniversary, pick one 5 star CE from a list of 7 choices. Which is going to be Formal Craft, Imaginary Around, Limited Zero Over, Kaleidoscope, Prismas Cosmos, The Black Grail, and The Volume Hydragon. Um... This is going to be a pick kaleidoscope or black grail with most people i believe choosing black grail because i did a video specifically saying like hey let me help you out a little bit and please let me know what you're going to pick so i have a better idea of what everyone's picking and a lot of people are picking black grail and there's like one dude who's going nah limited zero over i need it i already have these two max limit break and i'm like you go and one other person saying like yo prism of the cosmo is kind of underrated which i could see anyway next that's one of the ten There'll be login bonuses and cumulative login bonuses. There'll be a lucky bag summon campaign, which I've already talked about in greater detail. This one I'll also talk about later for later stuff, but just to show you this is what it's going to be like. The important thing here is on day 7, 10 summon tickets and 3 million QP a day, so make sure to not lose your login bonus. Uh, permanent battle system update. This is another thing that I talk about we will require a larger video to talk about, but basically Mighty Chain is coming as well as some buff to quick card stuff. And the long and short of it is just know that a lot of stuff that was previously kind of useless to use is getting much better, such as using quick chains. Uh, Mighty chains are going to be here, and they're going to be two kinds. One that will feature all three servants using different of the cards. You, you, you can see here with Ku, Emiya, and Saber, you, one using a quick, one using an arts, one using a buster. And then there's a mighty version of it where it's an individual servant. So that will make it so a lot of servants who 
kind of suffered from the fact that they couldn't go like three buster or they have a specific kit that's like hey i really want you to use like i buffed the quick card and the arts card and it's like why would you ever do that this will help justify it just that much better because they're going to be much stronger as opposed to being just slightly weird to the point where um i was mentioning specifically i don't like units like that and someone said what about mighty chain and i said i'm gonna be real with you i forgot about mighty chain because it's not an na yet <laughs> and so i'm feeling the same way japan players play it felt like until it came in so i'm looking forward to seeing a lot of that stuff right there and see if my opinion changes for a lot of those units who were like that uh, and then also there will be buffs to quick stuff um quick cards will be better in general if you didn't know in the old days all cards in the chain gain uh chain gains increase crit star generation and then starting with this all cards in chain uh gain increase crit star generation and then all cards in chain gain t plus 20 percent crit chance so that would be really good <sighs> next one but again that requires a larger video just know it's coming next one ascension rewards this one's a huge big ass one um basically every ascension of a servant comes with a small reward what does that mean it means on ascension stage one two and three you're gonna get one pure prism uh and then on the third one on the fourth stage you'll get three sync quartz or one rare mana prism and for permitted limited story lock servants that's the three quartz and if they are limited by an event or a friend point four stars specifically including mariani and oda nobukatsu um it means that they are going to uh, give you the rare mana prisms. The reason they say including Mary Anning and Nobukatsu is because all the bronze ones give you sync three sync quartz. And this is where a vast majority of the sync quartz are going to be coming from the uh, event it's, uh, from the anniversary itself. So make sure to get as much as you can. I'll say specifically how much it is in a later video waiting. <laughs> as you can see, a lot of these are like, yeah, in a later. New extra missions are coming as well. Um, with a total of... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, so that would be 120 Saint Quartz, which are going to be related to clearing Avalon Le Fay Part 1, 2, and 3. Clearing 210 to 250 Strengthening Quests, so in increments of 10 afterward. So you get what 10 for 210, 10 for 220, 230, 240, 250. Clear 250 interludes and 260 interludes. And then complete 230 main reward free quest, and then I assume 240, but they messed up on the wiki over here when they put this down. And because now we're getting stuff related to ascending units to their final um, form, uh, you will get a lore for every five that you get there, and it goes up to 150. Uh, and then if you reach 150, you'll just have to wait for them to add in more. <laughs> There'll be a daily mission revamp, so now on you'll get 10 mana prisms and a ticket, an exchange ticket that will let you choose for uh, a different monthly exchange ticket uh, item thingy. Uh, daily quests will be revamped, um, which is the most important one here is Saturday and Sunday. All Ember Quest and all Hunting Quest Grounds will be the same, uh, which is very good. There will also be a campaign where Ember and Hunting Ground Quest will be one half AP. Uh, and then super and great success rate will be tripled for leveling and craft essences. So it'll be your time to get your craft essence to level 100 or get your dude uh, as high a level as you can for as cheaply as you can. Story exchange will be coming for servants, craft essence, and command codes, uh, along with a second archive expansion slots as well for a servant and craft essence, which will be very nice as I need as much as I can. There'll be servant strengthening quests, uh, 10 in total. For the units that are going to be getting them, it is going to be very quickly here. Vlad, uh, the Impaler, which is the, th the Lancer version. Um, Henry Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh, Medusa Lancer. Deer Mood Lancer. Saber Shiki. Fergus. Um, Ushiwakamaru Assassin. Uh, Bart. Um, Murasaka Shigibu Summer. Towa the Rice Man. Voyager. Uh, Gils the Reyes, the Caster version. Um... Lancer Saber, not Lancer Saber, Lancelot Saber, and Bunyan. Uh, specifically the Berserker Bunyan. So those will be coming two at a time uh, for an entire week. <sighs> and then there will be other campaigns related to them. Specifically Archetype Earths, the Trial Quest will be here. Um, Avalon Lefay will be half off AP. Da Vinci's Workshop will have all the things that they always get for anniversary or any kind of special celebration. Which most importantly includes 10 summon tickets in it. 
which is the most important thing because it's the thing that lets you summon more. <laughs> um, and then there'll also be for rare prisms as well. Um, yes, with Golden Foe in here, Lord, the basic stuff that's always in there. Custom costume dresses will also be available for Saber Shiki, her bunny outfit for the first, second, and third ascension. Um, it will cost two rare mana presents unless you cleared Solomon, in which case it's free. Mysterious Heroine Z will just be straight up free after you clear Solomon. Uh, Musashi Chan Summers uh, mode after you clear Fuyuki. Um, if you clear Samosa, it will be there. Um, it will be free, otherwise, it's two. And then Testament Form for Ilya, which will be free if you clear Solomon, but cost two rare mana prisms if you get it before then. And as always, if you uh, when you if you choose to buy these early without waiting for them to be free, when you get them free, you'll get those mana prisms back. Uh, battle updates, support NP update. You're now going to be able to use your friend or NPCs, um, non-friend NPC support noble phantasms can now be used, which is very nice. Special NPCs for interlude, in case you either don't have the unit or you just want to use a special NPC for any given interlude, you can do that now. Uh, I guess if you want, because sometimes you'll have an interlude for a unit and then you don't have their skills leveled, so you can just go that way. You won't be able to choose their CE, it looks like, though. A St. Quartz UI will be updated, so now it's easier to tell how much St. Quartz you have and how many fragments you have. And also, if you attempt to use a summon with St. Quartz and you don't have enough, then you'll be able to get the difference using the uh, fragmented St. Quartz. They'll just pop up something like saying, like, hey, you want to use this? And then you can go, yeah, sure. A bunch of units are going to get a full screen MP. Um, and then, yeah, there'll be more promo materials. You, the Twitter header will still be there, and everything else related to Twitter will still be there. They'll just have to say uh, the other bullshit word that they call Twitter, but everyone knows it's just Twitter. Um, summoning campaign. Uh, this is where Archetype Earth is going to show up. Zufu, along with the limited craft essences A, Inspire, Retravel, and the new Cs that are not on Raid Up, Celestial King, and the Hunter's Dream. Also removing this bastard from the pool, which is Knight's Pride, so it no longer has to show up in any of my summon videos. <sighs> yep, and that's the anniversary unit. It is Archetype Earth, and um, fun times. Again, I'll be talking about Archetype Earth a little bit more in a later video if you are more interested in that. But just know that she's going to be here. Um, and either you're getting one copy because you're like, damn, my girl Ark is in here, or you're getting multiple copies because you're saying, damn, my girl Ark is in here, but I want her to actually to be able to kill things. Next, daily summoning campaigns. Uh, just because apparently Archetype Birth was just not enough. They needed more units to be able to be summoned for. Uh, this is the banners that will hold uh, Saber Shiki, Summer Nero, Mysterious Heroine X, Voyager, Summer Musashi, Summer Abigail. Ilya, the five-star version, Ushiwakamaru, Summer, and Summer Musa uh, Murasaki, along with Zufu being on Raid Up as well. And these banners will be spread out so you can choose to get them as well. I believe none of the old Cs will be showing up, in case you were curious about any of the old ones, so there you go. Uh, good luck to anyone who's summoning on these. And yeah, like I said, the Lucky Bag summoning campaigns and the limited missions I already have gone over, so... That's basically all, a very quick look of all the things that are in there. Again, look forward to when I talk about more. And also, these are all things that we're just aware of. I don't know what they're going to plan to add for... Um, if they plan to add any like any exclusive stuff or anything like that. Like when we did Anime Expo last year, they added on that Tsukihime remake. <laughs> or they tried to, and then the everything ended. <laughs> Uh, they cut it off and then they said afterwards, yeah, that was Tsukihime remake, it's coming. So, we'll see. We can't wait for that panel to show up. Anyway, that's summer. Uh, that's not summer. That is the start of July. That's anniversary. That's a six. And then a week and a couple days later, likely, is when we're going to get the Arctic Summer World, which is going to be the main event that will take up like three weeks of actual July stuff. This is the main event. This is like literally the the only event because it's summertime. Uh, Arctic Summer World. This is the... Um, oh boy, this is the one where they had three summon banners on it. A very quick look into it. It is a uh, event in terms of the new units that you'll get from it. One of them is... Oh man, where are they? They are here? No. 
they are not here. There they are. Um, basically, there's a, f a similar to how. Okay, do you remember how they did Mecha Liz and you got one on rerun? Uh, you got one on the basic run, and then the next time you waited, and then you got it on rerun to get both versions of Mecha Liz. They did that again, except for this time it is the Valkyries, which all of them have also an alternate of the other sister that appears in the NP of the original Valkyrie. And the other thing that's different here is that they didn't do the, the rerun, so you can only pick one of these at the moment. I assume whenever they make the summer event widely available for everyone they will find a way to let you get uh the other two on here but as far as it, this event goes and as far as i'm aware of two years in the future who knows if they added something by the time i release this video or after i release this video you can only pick one of them so choose carefully <laughs> which one you like the most because you're not going to get the other two for at least over two years uh which is very annoying for someone like me who likes to have all of them uh, we even had a chance to potentially vote for this to be returned, and they didn't pick this one. They picked the last summer uh, event that we did, the first summer event they started skipping summer reruns for. Um, great system you got here for Go. Really glad you started s skipping one of the most, <laughs> the, the event people like the most, which is summer. <laughs> great, great idea. Awesome idea. Anyway, I'm going to be too bitter if I keep talking about it. That's going to be the main free-to-play unit, so you have time now to think about it. In terms of the actual banners, there's four banners up in here. Um, three of them being new servants and one of them being men servants who are very good. Uh, starting with the first two banners, it will be Summer Campaign 1, which will feature Lady Avalon and Gareth Saber, along with the Limited Craft uh, Essences Twin Tail, cr uh, Cruising Date, and... Uh, Jiangxi attack? The whatever they call the I believe the Chinese vampires? Jiangxi? Is that what they're called? Yeah. Jiangxi? Okay. Jiangxi. Jiangxi? Jiangxi. Alright, Jiangxi is the CE with our monum, the Chinese hopping vampires. That's what they are. This features Lady Avalon and Garrus Saber. Uh, Lady Avalon is technically a collab unit, but she is a collab unit that was allowed to be a summer unit. I don't remember the Hocus Pocus magic that let them allow this to happen, but yeah, Lady Avalon is here. Um, summer campaign for the men. You got Domin, Yang Quinn, and Asclapius, and this also features the man CEs, which is Infinity Blue, Upcoming Anglers, and the Hello Arctic. Uh, Domin is an extremely good unit. I think Yang Day, Yang Quinn has been buffed a whole bunch, but I'm not actually sure how good he is. I just know he's been buffed. He was really bad um, <laughs> when he released, and I don't know enough of his follow-up to say definitively if he is good or bad. Uh, but the other unit that's on here is Storylog, and that's Asclapius, and he is very good. And he is amazing, and also there's not a lot of easy ways to get medals for him. So it might be worth it if you're someone who just loves Asclepius to be 100% real with you. If you just love your boy that much and you want to try and get him and also try and get Doman, who is an extremely good quick unit, uh, especially on NA, uh, and you want a specific um, quick unit that is like, damn, I need a super strong-ass quick unit to test all these new quick stuff and then test it out with the new quick support that you'll potentially be getting in here. It's Doman right here. Summon Campaign 2, which is the one that features Ibuki and Eris. And this also features all of the, the CEs. Uh, Buki Doji is an extremely powerful uh, Berserker AoE. Um, let me hear. <laughs> tell me if you heard this one before. She's a Summer Berserker, and she has a strong AoE. Seems very familiar. Um. This is the unit that I've been saving 300 tickets for, and I have a extravaganza summoning campaign ready for it for when it happens. Looking forward to it. I This is the unit I literally waited two years to ensure that I would have enough pity for. Right when they showed her off, I said, no more ticket summons. <laughs> and I've had to deal with people saying, after I said, oh, I'm all out of stuff to summon with, going, don't you have 200 summon tickets? I'm like, you need to catch up with the lore, dude. I'm not using those yet. <laughs> And then finally, the last Summer Banner, which is going to feature uh, Summer Scotty and Wu Zetain, uh, who is going to be the new quick support. Doesn't mean that the old Scotty is um, obsolete. It does mean that this is just the new best one in it. You can use both of them together, and there are specific teams that use two Scotties. Um, 
with Summer Scotty, or is it, I guess it would technically be Summer Scotty, your Scotty, and then a Summer Scotty slash a regular Scotty, um, stuff like that. But anyway, uh, it should go that Lady Avalon and Domin are first, followed up by not even a week, it's four days later, which would mean I think three days later, it's a Buki Doji, and then three days later again, uh, Scotty will be here. This is a, a killer's row. The reason being is that these are three summer units. I know they're specifically people who summon only on the units that they care about and are super strong. I understand that. And for them, it's easy for them to skip units. I like a lot of these units, regardless of how good or bad they are. And summer is especially a weak point. I want all summer servants. I don't care if they're good or bad. I want them. That's why my summer marine is at P4, because I summoned on that banner a whole bunch, and I went chasing an MP5, and I was rewarded with an MP5 uh, summer uh, saber archer instead. But regardless of anything else, back on track. Uh, this is going to be very killer. It's going to be very... Uh, good luck to anyone. At the, I'll see anyone here at the end of it, especially because as bad as I this seems to be summoned, I don't think they ever do this format again where there's basically four banners to summon on. Next year, it's going to only be... It's going to be, it's funny enough, actually, next year is also four, but the summer banners are specifically one and three, I believe, and then there's two man banners, which is a little bit easier to deal with um, because it's more annoying to do it this way. But to be fun, funny enough, it's actually, this is way better if you care about, uh, specifically getting the Force, uh, Servant. Because this makes it much easier to get Gareth, Eris, and Wusatane when they're not trying to fight with each other over all of them. But that also means that one of these are also a five-star. So it's going to be a rough-ass year. I've been waiting for it. Hopefully it doesn't treat me too badly, because to be 100% real with you... I need to start saving up for 2025 already, <laughs> and as as much as this year is looking like I'm glad to be finally at the halfway point and be able to finish this off, it's there's so much worse coming in 2025 in terms of things I want to summon on <laughs> that it made this year seem, in comparison, easier to deal with, if that sounds insane to you. It does. Anyway, that's going to be the event. Like I said, it should run for about three weeks. And then some other stuff will potentially be here, such as the Melty Blood type Lumina. Chances are this might actually show up around Evo time, just to say like, hey, just for a reason to do this banner and do stuff like this. The reason is, is that this actually does have a legit banner featuring um, these three up here, Zufu, Saber, and uh, Roland. Uh, with the limited craft assets being all mash ones, including the taunt mash one, which is a plus 60 defense increase in a taunt for a single turn, um, which taunties are very good. Uh, Dumplings Over Flowers, Grand New Year, Dangerous Beast, Caldea Anniversary, and Signs of a Smiling Face. Um, if you're a big mash head, it's your time to summon for mash. And then there will also be a, uh, some other stuff related to it, I believe. Yeah, like you'll be able to get the other summer mash outfits and stuff. Um, and event quest, yes, it will drop this craft essence, which is just type Lumina. I actually don't know if we already have this in here, but we are is that real view. But anyway, continuing on, um, the other thing that should also show up is another banner. Like I said, last year's summer event doesn't get rerun, so that means instead they rerun the banner, uh, which the banner will feature Okita, Anastasia, uh, Okita Alter, Anastasia V, Charlotte Corday, the caster version. Well, it's the only one you can summon on a on, on a quartz banner. And then the other banner will have Kama Avenger, Kynus, and say Shogun uh Shonagun? Yes. I keep wanting the color Shogun. That is not Shonagun it's Shogun. It is Shonagun. But anyway, the Berserker version, the summer version, and that one will be from the uh you'll see about basically a week for both when it comes up. This will be your chance to get Summer Kama, um, or Summer Okita Alter, or any of the other Summer units I featured on here. I like Summer Say. I like all- actually, I like all- I thought this was a good batch of units for Summer. I really did like it, a whole bunch. Um, shame they never re-ran it. I think the story is a little bit weird, especially by the end of it. I think the end of the story- but it might also be because it has my- 
it has the opposite of a comfort character. It has my discomfort character, Columbus, who automatically makes any event worse the second I see him. And he had a pretty large focus in it. But anyway, uh, there should also... We're now getting to things that might be at the very end of July, which is the 26 million download campaign. Because this happened literally on the last day of August, it means that this could happen probably on the last day, uh, it did not, it, yeah, the last day of August. This might show up on the last day of July, maybe? Or sometime in July. You never know sometimes with NA. And this will feature, oh my god, this features so much. Another login stuff, which will end with 10 summon tickets, uh, and the basic stuff right here. Um... Da Vinci's Workshop will get some permanent items. I think there'll be an update of sorts where now will be 10 5 EXP. And then the four there'll be still 4 EXP in there that you can trade for five times, except for now the cost will be 15 instead of 40. Um, and the ability to um, have Idol Maker again. Uh, and Space Ishtar's Origin form also unlocks, which if um, and it's free. If you cleared Solomon, stuff like that. And there will also be a limited time items, which means, again, limited time to get uh, five summon tickets, which is really nice. <sighs> and then there will be a game update, which in the login rewards, it will be on day three and day five. It will now be five AXP instead of four EXP. The exchange ticket will also get much better. Um, starting with the next. This is why it had to be at the end of the month, because the upcoming exchange tickets. So, yes, this will be at the end of July. Um... Because they have to do this. That makes sense. Um, they only up upgrade it with now five uh, five materials to choose from. And I believe this is already in here, but I don't know. From August 31st, it is now possible to use multiple AP recovery items at once. The maximum amount of items usable depends on the current max AP amount used this formula usable around. I think they already do this. Your current, uh, your current, The maximum AP you currently have is 100. Your AP is a 30. If you were to use bronze saplings, recover 40 AP to refill your AP. The maximum amount you can use is 2, temporarily raising your current AP to 110. Yeah, I feel like we already have that. That might have just been something they put in when it did not work like that originally. And then there will of course be summon banners related to this, which will have Space Ishtar and Calamity Jane on one banner. <sighs> and then on the other banner... Ishtar, Air Chicago, Mysterious Heroine X Alter, Minamoto no Raiko, Ibuki Doji, and Amakasu Shiro. Those are all the dudes that are also coming with the 26 million download campaign. Um, crazy way to end the month. And that's what July is potentially looking like. And then what's August going to be looking like? Technically speaking, it would be whatever happens in September. And then what happens in October... They can't move this shit forward, because <laughs> that's where Halloween is. I don't know. Our uh, our things are kind of fucking out of whack, if you can tell by all the things I mentioned being in August. All this happened in August, but it's going to happen in July for us, so that's a thing to look at for the future. Um, but that's what it's currently looking like in July. There's a lot of stuff to go over. Like I said, I tried to go very over it very briefly. If you want more in-depth videos talking about them, I will release them and I'll talk more in-depth about it just because I feel like um, if you just want to quickly know, this is your way of quickly knowing and you can see on the screen if there's anything that interests you. But if you care about a deeper dive, then I can kind of go into that as well. Um, the reason is, is that I also don't want this video to be long, and I think in the past I used to do it, depending on some months, because this month is just so jam-packed with stuff, I have to be a little bit more vague or else this video is going to be an hour long, and it's already like 33 minutes, and that was with me like just going very quickly like, hey, this, 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 and this, um, but we'll see, but anyway. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for making it all the way to the end. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you very much. Uh, Make sure to like and subscribe, I guess. And I will see you guys in future videos. Until next time, have a good day. Peace out.